I was given the opportunity to present my phase one study testing Pregnal in high risk in steroid refractory or steroid dependent acute graft versus host disease. We've known for many decades that escalating immune suppression doesn't always work in high risk GVHD. The paradigm has been if someone has very severe disease, we increase the immune suppression to kill the T cells that are attacking the host. But many studies have failed in this regard. And so I wanted to take a completely different approach. And my approach is based on the biology of pregnancy. I first had this idea when I was pregnant with my first child that this is a state of natural immune tolerance, two completely disparate genetic uh, organisms still tolerating each other from an immune standpoint. How could I apply this to graft versus host disease? And so I began to study the immunobiology of pregnancy and found that human chorionic gonadotropin is a really key hormone in establishing immune tolerance in pregnancy. Along the same time, I found that in pregnant women, they have very high levels of epidermal growth factor. This is a tissue repair factor that must have some key role in helping to develop the placenta. So then these two hormones, HCG and EGF, epidermal growth factor, I thought could be of use in treating patients with severe GVHD. A few years later, I found that in studying patients with GVHD, they had very low levels of EGF. And so finding a way to use these hormones to help patients recover really seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, fortunately, we found that human chorionic gonadotropin preparations that are derived from the urine of pregnant women just happen to contain very high levels of EGF as well. And so with a very inexpensive, commercially available product, I'm able to supplement HCG and EGF in patients with life-threatening GVHD. So this week I was able to present our phase one study where we did a dose escalation to find the ideal dose to test for moving forward in phase two. Um, we have already seen some really nice responses, but it's still very early in the study. And so we look forward to expanding that and learning more about how to use this medication to help recover from GVHD. A few key things that we found along the way, we did see an increase in regulatory T-cell to conventional T-cell ratio, suggesting that indeed it did help facilitate immune tolerance. And we found that biomarkers of tissue damage improved over time in responding patients, suggesting that it did indeed help facilitate the tissue repair that we need in GVHD. So I was really happy to be able to present those data and excited that perhaps I can contribute something that's really readily accessible, commercially available and inexpensive to help patients recover from this life-threatening disease.